everyone and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you throughout the 2018 season by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and together we'll take you behind the scenes at the Adelaide Football Club to bring you closer to the players and coaches as they strive for success. Coming up in today's show, the hot topic of Good Friday football. Good Friday footy underway here under the roof of Eddie Hatt. And never doubt the courage of AFL players. Oh, oh. back with a flight. But first, the homecoming of a favourite son. After an absence of six years, Ben Hart is back at the Crows. One of the club's most decorated players has spent nearly half his life at Westlakes, amassing over 300 games and assisting as a coach for four years. After a stint with Collingwood and a year out of the game, his football life has turned full circle. <laughs> As the Crows' new backline coach, Ben Hart, faced an immediate challenge, overcoming the loss of Brodie Smith and Jake Lever and recasting the defence. But after a stellar career, there are a few better qualified for the job. The journey was fantastic and you learn a lot and now it's just awesome to be back. So I've been coaching now for about 10 or 11 years and yeah, it's, it's uh, something that I have a passion for and hopefully I can help out. 27 years ago, Ben walked through the doors at Westlakes as a fresh-faced teenager. One of 10 youngsters invited to train with the club's inaugural squad. I had to get out of school a little bit early, come get mum and dad to drive me down and, um, and sat there and around the old Atco hut around near the SNFL there and um, oh look, just brilliant day. It was a, a dream come true and then uh, lucky enough to go out and train after that. They were heroes of mine so watching them go around and actually being able to train with them was fantastic. The McDermott's, McGuinness, Jarman's, those types. Um, and then just to be able to play my first game was brilliant. Um, in front of a packed footy park crowd back then. A year later, the 17-year-old played the first of his 311 games and later in the season won All-Australian selection. After retirement, he was an assistant to Neil Craig for four years before spending five seasons at Collingwood. Last year, he joined the media for a different perspective. It made me look upon footy with a different set of eyes and, and see things a little bit differently. So it all goes into the mix and hopefully I'm a better coach now. Now than, than when I uh, left last time. So now the hardened veteran is back where his heart has always been. The people have changed, a lot of people are different, some are similar, but the surroundings are always just a little bit home to me. Um, a little few changes here or there, but it, it's nice, it's very familiar. Um, love the place and it, it's just awesome to hopefully come back and be a bit part of uh, some more success. Yeah, great player and even better guy to have back at the club. Well, this weekend, for only the second time ever, we saw an AFL game on Good Friday. It's always been a divisive issue for players, coaches, fans and administrators, so I'm sure Mark Bickley has his take on it. Mark, are you still pretty close to the Crows players? Do you think they'd like to play on Good Friday? Yeah, look, I think they would. I think they understand that when they sign up as players, they're going to play and train on public holidays. And uh, whilst Good Friday is, is slightly different and it's been a very traditional day, I think once the, uh, the, the rituals have been observed for those that want to do it, I think there's an opportunity to do something later in the day, perhaps twilight or in the early evening. Well, Vic, so far, uh, only three clubs have been able to participate in games on Good Friday. Do you think it should be shared around between the clubs? And if so, how many games could we see on Good Friday? Yeah, look, I most definitely think it should be shared around. It feels like all the blockbuster games seem to be quarantined to the Melbourne clubs at the moment. I think this is an opportunity to, to share the love, so to speak. And in terms of games, I still think you can have a game in Melbourne and most likely an earlier game. And then if it's a twilight or a night game, I think that works in beautifully, whether that be, you know, Adelaide or Perth or Sydney, wherever. So, yes, spread them around and give the interstate clubs a go. Thanks very much, Mark. Well, it's certainly an issue that will always cause debate. Still to come on The Crow Show, big expectations rest on the shoulders of this young man and Brody Smith tries to match it with some of our youngest supporters.
Now, we know Brodie Smith always loved the hot seat so he could put the heat on his mates. This year, thanks to Thomas Farms, we let him loose with our youngest fans. And many of them are not lost for words, so it promises to be a revealing contest during the season. This week, we've got Liam. Welcome, Liam. Give me your age. Do you play footy? And who's your favourite player? So, I am eight, and my favourite player is Tex, and I play for Ranella Wineflies, and I do play football. And why is Tex your favourite player? I like him because he's really, he's, he's really fun. If you could go to the zoo and take any animal, what would it be, and how would you do it? I would take a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you get it? Sneak through the doors. And just what, under the shirt or just carry it out under your arm? No. Walk it I'll, out? No, I'll put it in my bag. You put it in your bag. <laughs> What's the best thing about being a kid? Best thing about being a kid, you get away with lots of stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what sort of stuff do you get away with? Hitting my brother. <laughs> if you walked into your room and you get home tonight, would you rather find 10,000 spiders or a tiger? I think a tiger. Why? Because they're easy. <laughs> they're easy, yeah. To get out your room. Just get out of there? Yeah. I don't know, I'll just lock the door and go into the spare room. Yeah, just lure it into your brother's room maybe. Yeah. And Make just him let deal it, with it. And then just let him eat him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for your time, Liam. That's all right. <laughs> NFL football is constantly evolving, but one thing never changes, our love of the spectacular mark. In this segment, High Flyers, brought to you by Flight Centre, will review some of the great grabs over the years. Today, we'll feature a club favourite, Jason Porplesia. Not a big player, but he had a big heart, as he demonstrated against Richmond in 2012. The might go up here. Oh, Porplesia, back with a flight. That's amazing commitment. I'd sort of worked back to goal and led up and I was furious that uh, I didn't get the ball past me so I sort of doubled back and I thought, oh stuff it, I'm just going for this. I should have got it anyway. And so I jumped back and um, yeah, I remember um, having some significant pain in the nether regions uh, as a result of it and uh, laid down on the ground for a few seconds and caught my breath. At the time I thought, oh yeah, someone from Richmond's collected me and uh, you know, that's how it goes. But uh, looking back at the tape on uh, during the week and Bernie Vince has just shoved the knee in and I reckon he's just sort of cowered down and didn't even have a look at the footy. There's definitely a few laughs uh, at uh, Bernie's expense or maybe my expense even. Well, please with great courage. Just eyes running back, ball. never took his eyes off it. Look, Look at that. That's great. No good taking a good mark unless you finish it off. So, uh, yeah, it was a, I think it was a pretty straightforward shot straight in front. So I had to make sure I nailed it. But uh, I think the game was in the balance at the time. So, um, yeah, we're on our way back. And um, I think from, from there on, we were able to take control and, and have a really good win in the end. Well, Pops went on to play two more years and chalk up 130 games. Stay with us. After the break, Mark will tell us about the new focus in player welfare and the magic moment every young footballer dreams of. Like all those who have gone before him, Tom Duday's AFL debut against Essendon was an occasion to celebrate with family and friends. In the change rooms beforehand, fellow defender Kyle Hardigan presented Tom with his new Guernsey and the career of the Crows' 217th player was off to a memorable start. This special moment is brought to you by Revolution Roofing. Okay, guys, as we uh, spoke about yesterday, we've got three debutants uh, for tonight. So, as is custom, we'll get uh, one of our players to introduce them and then uh, get the, uh, the parents to uh, hand over their, their first jumper um, and maybe say a few words. So, Hardo, lead us away, mate. Yep, so uh, we've got Cheryl and Steve here, Tom's uh, mum and dad. Um, Tom's going to become the 217th 
uh, player to pull on the Crows Guernsey tonight. Um, he's going to be the sixth guy uh, to wear the number 39 for Premiership points. Uh, Marty Matner previously wore this Guernsey for 98 games, uh, and also Riley Knight started his career in this Guernsey. Um, so Tommy, like, congratulations mate. Um, been here a couple of years now and um, you've taken some massive strides ahead in your footy career. And um, you know, this night's waiting for you. Just go out there, have fun, embrace it. I can't wait to hold down for you. So come across. <laughs> say a couple of words for Cheryl and I. Uh, we're wrapped Tom's here. This club has been fantastic to us as a family and to Tom as a, as a person. Kyle took Tom in when he first came over. It was, was fantastic. Great role model for him. He loves you guys and we love this footy club too. So thank you from our family and let's have a win tonight. Eh? Thank you. was the Crows first round draft pick back in 2015 and we certainly wish him well. The general well-being and mental health of players is a major emphasis for all clubs in 2018. Let's take a look at how the Crows are tackling the issue. Meditation for example has some enthusiastic support. We know there's a society that's got a lot of distractions these days and, and uh, one of those major distractions is the mobile phone. So um, you know, we, we know through our research that um, the average person spends uh, around about four hours a day on their mobile phone, which is, which is a lot, um, and that, uh, that creates distraction and uh, I guess lessens your ability to focus. So uh, the meditation along with some of our other uh, mind uh, performance programs is, uh, is just um, enhancing our boys' ability to be uh, focused, to, uh, to have clarity of thought, um, to be present in the company of, uh, of others and, and ultimately it's about building mental resilience so um, you know we know that the, the brain is just a muscle um, and we, we probably forget that sometimes we talk about the body being a, a, you know, a physical and, and a muscle but we talk about the mind being this you know this intricate thing the reality is that the brain is just a muscle and so it can grow and uh, and develop uh, resilience like any other part of the body so um, yeah so meditation for us is about um, you know growing that muscle and uh, and making sure that our players are, are focused when they're here and um, and connected uh, with each other and uh, and Building their mental resilience. So, from you know, from our CEO Andrew Fagan, uh, you know, to to our, to our uh, wider staff and and the coaching uh, coaching staff and players. So, right across our organisation, and uh, as I, as I said, it's 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 about um, you know in today's society, just um, having the ability to be able to stay focused, stay on task, have clarity, and and it doesn't matter whether you're an athlete or um, you're an individual in in, in the, the work environment. Um, the reality is, if you want to be a high performer, you need to be able to um, you know, be mentally resilient and, and have that focus. A few keen judges are excited by the potential of young Queensland recruit Elliot Himmelberg. The athletic key position prospect showed glimpses of what fans can expect with some good performances in the Sandfield last year, highlighted by four goals against Port Adelaide. Beats Himmelberg, he'll march into the open goal, puts the finishing touches on and the Crows have kicked five in a row. Pretty pumped that a couple of days ago I finalised um, that I'd be extending on for a couple more years until 2020. It's a perfect place to be at the moment for myself at, at least till 2020 and just really excited um, that I'm here to be involved in that window. Himmelberg on the right with a bounce through. He's got it, the Crows draw first blood. Uh, last year it's coming into the unknown, but this year um, you can sort of mentally prepare yourself a little bit better and obviously fairly uh, injury free, so that's a, that's a big bonus. I want to continue that consistency is probably the, the main one and then um, just making sure I'm doing everything I um, am asked to each week. Not being the, the heaviest bloke at the moment, so um, just learning what to do with, with my body work and in marking contests mainly, but um, also um, potentially in a contest, um, being um, flexible enough to handle any scenario. The tall forwards as Tex and, and JJ have been really good, uh, especially for me, and, and this pre-season um, JJ has probably stepped it up a, a notch as well, and um, off-field staff Tex has been superb as well. So. Um, obviously there's, there's others that you look at, um, Lynchy and, and Sloney and, and stuff like that, but the forwards are the ones that I um, probably spend the most time with, so they're the, um, the, the key uh, teachers, I'd say, to my development. When we return,
return. Fans look to the future and we look to the crowd. Many Crows fans will tell you they can pick a future champion. So this week we asked them which player they thought would have a breakout season. Uh, Dude for sure. I reckon he'll come in and replace uh, Jake Lever and do a wicked job. So looking forward to it. Matt Crouch. Eddie Betts. Mitch McGovern for sure. Oh, hopefully Betts will have a good year this year. I'm hoping um, Ben Jarman. Oh, Dode and Fogarty. Yep. Murphy. Edwards. I'd like to see Edwards. So let's now select our own fan in the crowd. Plenty of faces to choose from. Why don't we settle on you? If you recognise yourself, email the club by 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack courtesy of Toyota. Well, that just about wraps up our show brought to you by Foodland. And don't forget, you can keep up with all the news by visiting the club website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook and Twitter. That's right. Now, we'll be taking a break for a couple of weeks while Channel 7 gives extensive coverage to the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. Mm. So we'll return with the Crows show on April the 22nd. Thanks very much for your company today, and we look forward to joining you then. Bye for now.